What's up, Green Bay Packers fans? Welcome back, and as always, thank you for joining me. My name is Paul Brettel. Today we're here to talk about the Green Bay Packers run game on both sides of the ball because when it comes to the issues, the struggles that this team overall is having, a lot of it can be traced back to an inability to run the ball and an inability to stop the ball on defense. So we're going to talk about that today. But first, hit like on the video, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. I do greatly appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at Paul underscore Brettel. And you can find all my work over at Packers Wire. So let's dive in. We're here to discuss the run game today. Again, on the, both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. Let's start with the offense. Uh, Packers have one of the worst rushing offenses in football. Let's just start there. They rank 29th in yards per carry this season uh, as a team amongst their running backs. And I know it's easy to say they need to run the ball more. And to a degree, they absolutely do. But football is such a nuanced game. There's never any, you know, or very rarely one particular reason why something isn't working. There's a lot of factors that go into what we end up seeing take place on the football field. So from the run game's perspective, you know, again, the Packers are struggling in that regard. Uh, A.J. Dillon, who's had the majority of the carries this season, doesn't have the burst playmaking ability Aaron Jones does. Uh, vision has been off. Balance has been off. And the offensive line as a whole just isn't creating a ton of running lanes for him. In A.J. Dillon's defense at times, there's plenty of times where he's getting hit in the backfield before he even has the opportunity to get going. So again, the run game struggling. But also defenses, they're trying to take away the run game against Green Bay. Matt LaFleur talked about this following the Lions game. Detroit loaded the box against them. And that's really not something new. For this season, I mean, uh, the Saints, the Falcons, very aggressive in playing a lot of cover one, basically daring the Green Bay Packers to throw the football. And for an offense that has a lot of, uh, again, Matt LaFleur talked about this on Friday, a lot of uh, run pass cans where there's a run play called, there's a pass play called, it's Jordan Love's decision to you know, pick which one based on what the defense is doing. You know, he's made, LeFleur said, the, the right decisions in terms of should they run the ball, should they pass the ball. And LeFleur wants to play that probability. He wants the odds in his favor. So when a defense is loading the box, uh, trying to take away the run, and they're in cover one, single high safety, they got one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, like, yes, that favors the passing game. And LeFleur wants to take advantage of that versus continually running into uh, again, loaded boxes with a with a run game that's already not performing well. So that's what the 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 Green Bay Packers are up against. The issue is that the passing game at this stage, first time starting quarterback, young group of pass catchers, like it's not consistent enough. It's not strong enough to shoulder the the workload, the the burden of being the the aspect that single handedly basically has to move the ball down the field for the Packers. Jordan Love, he's battling accuracy issues at times. The Green Bay pass catchers, I mean, from a detail standpoint with running their routes, like they're not as precise as they should be. They're not uh, exactly where they need to be in terms of you know running the route, in terms of being in this a specific spot as, at a specific time. You know, they're still working through that. So again, those two factors, the uh, the route running and then loves inaccuracy at times, you know, that leads to an inconsistent passing game. So let's take a step back. Struggling to run the ball. Defense is daring you to pass it. And again, from a probability standpoint, that's the part you want to attack because that's what they're giving you. They're trying to take away the run. But the passing game isn't strong enough, efficient enough, effective enough to move the ball consistently in that capacity. It needs the run game to lean on. So you add all that together and you have an offense that cannot move the ball on early downs right now. And that just has a massive trickle down effect to, again, the passing game, to the defensive side of the ball, to everything. It's poor complementary football that the Packers are playing right now. Jordan Love on second downs is completing just 46% of his passes. Again, accuracy, route running, those are factors in that as well. But the Packers are in second and longs a ton. They're in third and longs a ton. And... That benefits the defense. The pass rush is now able to pin its ears back. It doesn't have to worry about playing the run or playing the pass. They know you're passing the ball. They can just, the pass rushers can just go from point A to point B and try to get after you. The defense as a whole, they're able to get into more favorable matchups where they're doing the dictating. Again, they know you're passing the ball, and that's leading to those issues on second down. Of course, that then translates over to third down. On uh, 
third and four yards or fewer this season, the Packers are converting 75% of the time. Again, when they have that element of run pass mix involved, makes things a lot more difficult for defenses, gives the offense, puts them in the advantageous situation. However, on the flip side, when it's third and five or longer, the Packers are converting only 28% of their third down attempts this season. So their inability to move the ball on early downs is basically, it feels like a, it feels like doom at that point. If they only are only picking up zero, one, two yards on first down, it feels almost inevitable right now, like a punt is coming. So those are the issues on offense. Then the offense punts the ball. It's a quick three and out, whatever it may be. Maybe they get a first down. Now the defense gets the ball back and they're struggling to stop the run. Again, just compounding everything that the offense is experiencing. If we look at the Detroit game and the Atlanta game, the two games where the Green Bay Packers gave up 200 plus rushing yards defensively, the Falcons and Lions absolutely dominated those games from a, a number of plays standpoint and a time of possession standpoint. On average, between those two games, Detroit and Atlanta ran 25 more plays than what the Packers did. They held the ball for almost 15 minutes longer on average than what the Packers did. That is really, really, really hard to overcome for an offense. Just that large of a discrepancy in terms of plays ran and time of possession. And again, that's a product of short drives on offense, not being able to get off the field on defense. So the defense is on the field a lot more because the offense is having short drives. I think the Falcons game, that fourth quarter, is a prime example of this. The offense ran 11 plays, held the ball for three minutes. The other 12 minutes, the Packers' defense was on the field. And that's not to excuse the defense's performance. They obviously have to be better against the run, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But that doesn't make things any easier for them either. So the defense is giving up these long drives. They're giving up points. Now the offense is getting the ball back, probably down a touchdown, especially the last two games, down multiple scores at that point. And that only uh, magnifies the issues that they're already having. You already can't run the football, but now you're trailing and feel the need to play catch up. So you're going to pass more again, where there's inconsistency, the defense is daring you to, and they just don't have the ability right now to be able to weather that storm of just leaning so heavily on the passing game. And so that leads to struggles on first downs. And you can see how this vicious cycle that the Packers have found themselves in for a good portion of the last two games begins, takes off, and really just sucks them in. Now, with all that said, do the Packers have to find a way to run the ball more? They do. However, it's really difficult to do that when everything I just described is taking place. Look back at the Lions game. Before the Packers knew it, it was 24-3, to and they had run 11 plays on offense. Like, they came out passing on six of those plays, could they have run the ball more? Sure. But also when the offensive line's getting bullied as bad as the Packers did, I don't think it much matters at that point. Like you can't establish the run when you only have 11 plays, uh, you know, through the first, whatever that was quarter, quarter and a half and are down 24 to three. Like you, you just can't do it at that point. And then from uh, the, the Packers, what they can do is get more touches for their playmakers. And Matt LaFleur talked about this as well. Aaron Jones, Christian Watson, 100%. They can't be going a full quarter without either of them getting the ball. So there are things that they can do where Matt LaFleur might have to scheme up some design plays for them to get them in space just to get them the ball, just to let their playmaking take over. Again, there's things that can be done from a game plan standpoint, schematic, uh, play calling standpoint from Matt LaFleur, but also a big part of this, just the execution on the field has to get better. Running lanes for the ball carriers have to be there. A.J. Dillon, the ball carriers have to be more effective. Love has to be more accurate as a passer. The route, the receivers have to be more precise with their route running. Like the execution overall from this offense has to improve. And if it doesn't, again, it gets really hard to get into that rhythm because you can't establish the run in 11 plays over a quarter and a half. You know, for a Matt LaFleur offense where the passing game builds off of what's established in the run game, I mean, that's drastically hurting yourself when you don't have that ability. This is also an offense where concepts build off each other. You know, they're going to give a defense a look in the first quarter and run one play off of it. They're going to give the defense the same look in the third quarter and run something completely different, again, to keep them off balance, to keep them guessing. But you can't do that when you're not moving the ball whatsoever. When you're only having 11 plays through 20 minutes, 20 plus minutes 
of the of the actual NFL game. So again, a lot of this starts with the the run game has to be better in those early down situations, but it's all 11 players. It's a, it's a collective issue that the Packers are working through right now, but you can see how quickly that that things spiral out of control without that early down success uh, for this Packers team. And, you know, this week, and we'll talk about on the defensive side too against the Raiders, it's the opportunity for this offense, this Packers offense specifically, to hopefully find some success, like some sustained success from quarter one to quarter four. Because while you very, very much got to be mindful of Max Crosby, uh, Raiders edge rusher, absolute game wrecker, leads the NFL in pressures right now, Outside of him, like this is a defense that's really struggled this season. Uh, struggled on the ground, given up a lot of points, uh, struggled in third downs, red zone, turnover differential. Like basically pick a key defensive stat, uh, category. And there's a good chance the Raiders are for sure in the bottom half and probably near the, the, the bottom of the NFL in those categories. So the opportunity is going to be there on Monday against the Raiders if they can uh, not let, again, Max Crosby take over for the Packers to hopefully find some sustained success because again, the, what they're doing right now, just they're ending up on the hamster wheel, just in a vicious cycle going over and over and over again. And it trickles down to every other aspect uh, of the football game. Let's change gears. Packers run defense. I wrote an article for Packers wire a few days ago, basically saying it's now or never for this run defense against the Raiders. Like if they cannot find some sort of success against the Raiders run game, they're probably never going to this season. I mean, what the Packers have going for them, potentially, uh, they're coming off a mini buy. So they've had additional time to prepare for this game. They just gave up 200 plus yards to the Lions the second time in three games they've done that. So the run game, the run defense, I should say, is absolutely under a microscope. Like Matt LaFleur talked about it on that Friday uh, following the Lions game, that they need to reevaluate their team philosophy uh, when it comes to the run game and not being so, his word, rigid in sticking with their shell coverages. Because you know, that's what a lot of this is. This Joe Barry defense, which stems from the, the Vic Fangio style. And again, Matt LaFleur brought uh, Barry here to run this specific style of defense. But... It plays a lot of quarters coverage, cover two. It's meant to take away the big passing play, force the defense to have to put together long drives without making a mistake, which doing that over and over and over again when you're expected to put together a scoring drive on 12, 13, 14 plays comes difficult to do. Like that's a core principle of this defense. Don't give up the big passing play. Make them, if they're going to move the ball down the field, do so in – you know, little chunks, five yards, six yards, whatever it may be. Again, because that's difficult for an offense to sustain repeatedly over the course of a game. Another factor of that defense is they play with light boxes. And again, that makes you susceptible to the run game. So that's what the Packers, you know, that's where a lot of these issues stem from. And also too, from the player's perspective, like they have to be better. Edge rushers have to be better at not letting the ball carrier get outside. Guys have to get off blocks. Like go back and rewatch that Lion game. It felt like any time a defender was engaged with a Lions offensive player, they were pretty much taken out of the play. Like that can't happen. There's um, running lanes that aren't being filled by the linebackers. There's just missed tackles. Like yes, Joe Barry 100% has to make adjustments, but the players got to play better too. Like again, it goes back to. This is on everyone. I know we all want to pick out what's that one thing that we can focus on, pinpoint, and say, this is the problem. This is what we got to fix. But most often in football, again, it's such a nuanced game. There's a ton of different factors. So pick a player, pick a coach. They all have to be better when it comes to the Green Bay Packers run defense. So the the Packers are, we'll see anyways, but the, my point is they've had the opportunity, this window here at this mini buy to make those adjustments. Joe Barry said he's gone back and watched every run defense snap from this season multiple times. So hopefully we see those changes take place. Other factor, they're going up against a Raiders run game that's the worst in football. Yards per rush, they rank 32nd. Run DVOA, they rank 32nd. So again, you've had this time, this additional time with the mini buy to prepare. Hopefully there's actual changes that are going to take place from a, a game plan standpoint. I think from a, a, a rotation standpoint, there's opportunities for the Packers as well. I think having Preston Smith, 
uh, Lucas Van Ness out there on the rundown specifically, I think would be very helpful. And yeah, that's going to limit some of their opportunities in pass rush situations. But I mean, objective one, number one right now needs to be stopping the run. We need Kenny Clark and TJ Slayton on the field together more times on those early downs. Like Devontae Wyatt, he's a pass rusher right now. Uh, Kobe Wood and Carl Brooks, when they were drafted, it was you know, well known of their ability to get after the quarterback, the run defense aspect of it. And you can put Wyatt in this bucket as well as a young player. Like that's, that's not a, as easy of a transition to make in terms of just, Hey, go get the quarterback. You know, the run defense, there's a lot more to it from a, a technical standpoint that these players have to learn and get the reps with. And so I think, you know, in the interior defensive line is a heavily rotated position. It's not only always going to be Clark and Slayton, but if the Packers can uh, tilt the odds in their favor on those early downs of having those two on the field together, plus LVN, plus Preston Smith, I think just from a personnel standpoint in terms of being equipped to stop the run, that at least puts them in a little bit better position uh, than when they have like Enag Bari out there or Carl Brooks and Devontae Wyatt, who again, there's development needed from from a run defense aspect. So those are the changes that hopefully we see take place again, not just schematically and breaking out of that cover two shell, but uh, from a rotation standpoint as well, and really just trying to maximize stopping the run. Because again, that's where the priority needs to be. Just like on the offensive side of the ball, the Packers can't get the run game going. It puts the offense in a hole. It's the same thing from the opposite perspective for the defense. When the offense is picking up five, six, seven yards per run, they're in second and shorts. They're in third and short situations. You know, the the pass rush can't just get after the quarterback. They have to defend both the run and the pass. And this takes me to a different article that I wrote about about the Packers edge rusher group because Rashawn Gary's been exceptional this season. He's he's getting to the quarterback on once every three snaps, which is just an absurd rate. He ranks 75th among edge rushers in pass rush snaps, but 13th in pressures. He's been incredibly efficient. Everyone else in that position group, they're looking for consistency right now. And yes, their play has to improve, but I do think a product of the the inconsistency from the other members of the edge rusher room is the Packers' struggles in the run game. Like I was saying, when the, an offense is in second and third, uh, you know, third and three, they can run the ball. They can pass the ball. The defense has to be prepared for both, and that takes away some of the bite from the pass rush because they just – you know, in those situations, you can't just full go get after the quarterback because then you might lose your your run responsibility if that's if that's what the offense ends up doing. Packers have also played three quarterbacks in the first four games that are really, really good at getting the ball out of their hands quickly. And that element is magnified when, again, the offense is able to find success on early downs. When you're in second and three, you can rely on the quick passing game because you don't need to pick up eight plus yards, you know, if you pick up four or five on a quick throw, like that's moving the chains. You've picked up a first down on the flip side. If you have the offense in second and third and long situations, you know, they can't be as reliant on the quick passing game. They have to wait for those longer developing routes to take place so they can move the chains. And that just buys the, the pass rush just a little bit of additional time. And, and oftentimes in the NFL, that's really all that's needed. It's, it, it's a game of, you know, half seconds, you know, that that's a lifetime in the NFL. So I think, again, there's a number of factors that have contributed to the inconsistent play from the edge rusher group, of course, minus Rashawn Gary, who's been excellent, but again, it, it all starts with stopping the run. So to circle back to all this, it's now or never for that run defense. They've had time. Supposedly there's changes coming. And they're going up against, again, what is statistically the worst rushing offense in football. Like, if this unit can't figure it out this week, I, I don't know when it's going to take place. And one of the additional challenges that we all know the Packers will face this week, they have to go up against Devontae Adams, who he's been excellent this season, as as we all know. And, you know, Joe Barry might have to fight his his instinct to just sit in that cover, too, you know, to, to try to at least eliminate the the big play threat that we all know Devonte Adams can bring, but in doing so, as we talked about, it makes you susceptible against the run. So, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Joe Barry strikes that balance because what the Packers are talking about doing versus what he's been doing. And especially having to factor in that they're going up against Devonte Adams, you know, that's gonna, 
you know, that's going to, uh, those are two things at different ends of the spectrum. So how is he going to strike that balance? So there's also a Raiders offense that, uh, especially with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback, likes to attack the middle of field. Again, where quarters coverage, cover two is susceptible, likes to attack the underneath route, get the ball to guys in space. So again, we're going to have to see a different game plan from this group. And from an execution standpoint, they're going to have to be better on the field in terms of executing whatever it is that Joe Barry dials up for them. But again, just there's a lot to watch for in this game in terms of from just a, a Packers uh, perspective in regards to where they've been struggling because you know what kind of changes have they made during this mini bye week that they've had. So there you have it, my friends. Those are my thoughts on the Packers rushing offense, their rushing defense, two things that have been a big issue for them this season. But they'll have the opportunity against the Raiders on Monday to hopefully at least get things going back in the right direction. I appreciate you tuning in. Again, hit like on the video, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at Paul underscore Brettel, and you can find all my work over at Packers Wire. So until next time, friends, take care, stay safe, and as always, go Pack Go!